Equal work for equal pay is still not a reality for millions, and the struggle is even more real following the pandemic. Some say that's making them even more reluctant to enter the workforce. However, some minority employers say they're doing right by their employees before, during, and post-pandemic because they know what it feels like. 52-year-old Lilani Wilson-Jones advises companies around the world on diversity and inclusion as well as equal pay fundamentals. I started working when I was 14 years old. After earning her master's degree from SMU, Jones started her own company. The Dallas-based CEO now owns more than a dozen successful companies and employs more than 100 workers throughout the state of Texas. She takes care of all our staff. She loves all the employees. However, hundreds of thousands of employees return Turning to work at jobs across the country have substantiated complaints of unequal and unfair pay, namely black employees. I spent the first 15 years of my career in corporate America and absolutely felt um, th what the feelings that come along with being underpaid. I watched men around me make a lot more for the same job. For every dollar 15 cents an Asian man makes and every dollar a white man makes, a black man makes 87 cents. For Hispanic men, it's 91 cents. Meanwhile, across the board, women earn even less. And when it comes to black women, the wage gap winds to 60 cents on the dollar. Figures that make some stay home and others strike out on their own. And that was one of the things uh, that inspired me to start my own company. And now I'm making three times more than what I was making on my last job. Nationally, there are only a couple of occupations where women win wage-wise, social work and health care. Jones's companies provide services in education, beauty and wellness, and the health care industry. Her employees are thankful she provides them with child care. Who wouldn't want to come to work for somebody who, number one, is going to is going to uh, accommodate you during the pandemic? Experts say while the pandemic has stalled gains made, layoffs and lack of child care forced many women out of the workforce and exasperated the disparities by worsening problems for women, setting female workers back more than 30 years. It actually empowered and embodied us to move forward. The current female work participation rate is 55.8 percent, the same rate as in 1987 with occupational segregation, lack of access to paid leave and child or elder care impacting women of color most. Coupled with widespread devaluation of women's work, the issues have been long standing, but according to the U.S. Department of Labor, the COVID-19 pandemic further exposed the problems. Jones says her 25 plus years work experience that included discrimination and unfair pay early on inspired her. What it inspired me to do was know at a very early age that I needed to be my own boss. The occupational oppression helped her become a better leader for her employees. Jones also provides business development services, organizational development resources, and entrepreneurial mentorship. Jones says she mentors many and pays all equally based on merit and worth. I mean, and I think women bring a lot to the workplace that they're undervalued for. So I look at you and observe what you're able to do. And if you bring your weight to the table, I certainly pay you what you're worth. In 1973, women of color made only 57 cents per dollar earned by men. Today, we make only eight cents more nearly 50 years later. The pandemic stalled progress and caused regression in the closing of the wage gap, meaning there's still more work, months more on the year, in fact, for us to do to equal the pay of most of our counterparts unless there are more CEOs like Jones or who pay fairly in the mix. In Dallas, I'm Narissa Knight for BNC.